Thank God for the snow up in Pennsylvania, up north. We pray that all the people will be safe up there, Ryan. All the people will be safe. And um, pray that wherever you are, that God will keep you and your family. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Tis grace that brought us safe thus far. Grace will lead us home. So I get glad to see Jackie Fisher on with us today. So glad to see Loretta Jackson on with us today, Dustina, and many others of those who will come on. We greet those who are listening by way of recording. We record our services. Our services are found on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Leroy Carter. Our services are found on our website, uh, on a Facebook page. We got we have two Facebook pages under Leroy Carter and under Back to Basics Ministries. And then we just thank God for our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. And so we praise God. We thank God. We serve a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. We're going to um, look at part two today, part two of our series on idolatry in the church. I got, I got a lot of com comments last week about idolatry in the church, and people said, I didn't know. I didn't know that I was worshiping idols. I did not know that I was entertaining idols. And uh, many people repented. And, uh, you know, the teaching of the word, the preaching of the word is edification. And man, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I thank God for choosing me to preach his word, to be a Bible teacher, a Bible preacher. And uh, I've got to live this word, ladies and gentlemen. I just can't preach it and um, lay it all out there to you. I've got to live what I preach. And so... Uh, I, I, I usually come under conviction before any of you because the word, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts even, it divides the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow. And the word of God is a discerner of, thought, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <clears throat> God's word can discern whether a person's intents are correct or not. And so we live by bread, by the, the word of God, not by bread alone, but by the word of God. Okay, let's uh, do this. Let's have a, another song by our friend um, Kevin Wilson out there in London, Kentucky. And then we're going to, after that, we're going to bring Ryan Trogler on. And Ryan's going to lead us in prayer, if he will. And uh, we're going to... Uh, we usually ask Jackie Fisher to read the scripture, but I'm going to read it today because it's a long scripture, and I'll be preaching from uh, the scripture precept upon precept. And so let's hear a song by our friend uh, Kevin Wilson. Here's an appropriate song. It's called God Bless America Again. This is our friend Kevin Wilson. We do not have the rights to the song, but we do have Kevin's permission. Praise God to play his song. This is Kevin Wilson out of London, Kentucky. God bless America again. Thank you. 
God, we want to thank Kevin Wilson, our friend Kevin Wilson, for that beautiful song. Uh, praise God. Uh, God bless America again. He said, Kevin said in that song, we've got to do certain things, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to put, we've got to put the Ten Commandments back in. Put the Ten Commandments back on the courthouse square. Put reading the Bible back in the curriculum, open each day with prayer in our schools, on our jobs, in our homes, start each day with prayer. This is Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a great message, a very good message that we all need to pay heed to. Praise God. We met Kevin Wilson back in uh, July. He's a great man. He's a great man. And I like when he sings. He tells his audience, come on, help me now, y'all. Come on, help me now. That's Kentucky. That's Kentucky, Jackie Fisher. That's a man from Kentucky. Come on, help me now. In other words, he wants everybody to get involved in worship. Worship is getting involved and, and, and offering yourself unto the Lord. And, and, and together we worship him uh, communally. The Bible says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so we're welcoming you to the online church a church that is making a difference in people's lives. Everyone can't go out to the brick-and-mortar church. And so God has raised up uh, online churches like this to reach people, and God is doing a mighty thing. And we give praise and glory and honor to the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. We're going to ask Ryan, if Ryan's not snowbound somewhere, we're going to ask Ryan Trogler, Ryan, would you come on and, and lead us in prayer? Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's no snow where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Well, well yeah, snow flurry this morning, but nothing on the ground. But everybody north of me has got a couple of inches of snow. Praise God. Okay, well, I'm supposed to, the Lord laid on my heart this morning to do a special, since this is Thanksgiving week, I'm supposed to do a special Thanksgiving prayer. So Wonderful, uh, wonderful. So here we go. 
uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And we want to thank you for ascending into heaven, sit at the right hand of the Father, and to intercede for all mankind. And thank you for defeating death in the, in the tomb. And Lord, we want to thank you for this online ministry. We want to thank you for each and every member that's in here and, and celebrating your word. And we, Lord, we also want to thank you for your word. And we also want to give thanks for you to give you know, the courage and wisdom and knowledge to Pastor Carter to give us your word today. And also we want to thank you for each and every family member and, and, every, and every church member because they are brothers and sisters in Christ just like just like we are, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. And Lord, we just want to continue to give you thanks for the blessings and the protection and your grace and your mercy for each and every one of us. So now we say we thank you, we love you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, Christ, precious name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, we praise God for you, Ryan and Tara and Jenna. Thank God for your faithfulness and your love for the Lord. Ryan is growing so well, ladies and gentlemen. And I look forward to his ordination next year. And God's got a great work for you. So continue to be faithful, Ryan, and, and God is using us. God is using Dustina. God is using Jackie Fisher. God is using Loretta. By the way, <clears throat> back to Basics Ministries, uh, before we get into our message, we're going to uh, support. We wanted to help promote two businesses uh, in the next coming months, and these are businesses that our, our church members are involved in. Jackie Fisher is the our Mary Kay uh, authorized person. Jackie Fisher uh, sells Mary Kay products, and we have Jackie's uh, information on our website. And I, I will be sending out in the next couple of months uh, and a, a word of encouragement, okay? And, 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 and if you have a business, we'll promote you a, at the appropriate time. But this time we want to uh, really help and enhance Jackie and her, her great work. And so you'll be getting information from me uh, just asking you to look at what Jackie has and, 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 and support, support her she's a very very serious believer and a supporter of this ministry and so we want to <coughs> let you know that she's got a business that uh, you might benefit from she uh, provides Mary Kay products and uh, my wife Jackie has gotten some of her products and loves Mary Kay and so we thank God for Jackie Fisher. The second person we're going to be promoting in the next couple months is Loretta Jackson. Loretta Jackson is from Wilmington, Delaware. We just ordained Loretta back in August. And uh, Loretta has, has a gift. She's got, uh, ladies and gentlemen, she's got a skill that if she can see it, she can make it. I mean, that's, everybody can't do this, but ja uh, Loretta Jackson has a skill. God has gifted her hands that if she can see it, she can make it. And Jackie just made, I'm um, Jackie, Loretta just made for us, for Jackie and me, a blanket. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the most beautiful blanket you've ever seen. I'm going to be putting a, a photo of it online. Uh, she, she took a picture of Jackie and me. She, she worked with it and, 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 and designed it. And now it's it's you can use it as a blanket, you can use it as a wall tapestry, and uh, my wife Jackie has put it on the sofa as a sofa cover. It is so beautiful. So I'm going to be sending photos out to you all, and perhaps you might want to uh, uh, get a photo of you and your spouse, and, and 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 or you and your family, and whatever you whatever photo you send her, Loretta Jackson can produce something for you. She produces all kinds of things, cups and throw pillows and blankets and uh, tapestries. And so we want to produce, we want to promote these ministries. I don't usually do this and haven't done that much in the past, but these two ladies are very precious and dear to my heart, and they are dear to the ministry. And so we want to ask you to support them. Um, and even if, even if you don't choose to support them, take a look at what they're doing and then pray for them. These are very sincere ladies who love the Lord. And um, in addition to serving the Lord, they're serving the Lord in, in a way that can help people with their needs. Okay, thank you, Ryan, for the prayer. Thank you, everyone, for being online with us. We're going to look at the Word. Uh, I am excited about this, this uh, uh, series God has given us. 
idolatry in the church. This is not a popular subject. I tell you, hey, this <laughs> this uh, subject, as one of our church members uh, said to me this past week, he said, Pastor Carter, I listened to the tape and I listened again to the tape, and he said, and I said, ouch, ouch, ouch. He said, you were hitting me, you're stepping all over me. So you know the word of God will make you cry out, ouch. And uh, he said he repented. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I, even as I preach, I say, ouch. I may not, you may not hear me, but there are times I say, ouch. In other words, when the word of God convicts us, we've got to repent. We've got to tell God we're sorry. And so we're taking a look at idolatry in the church. I wish that the whole church, the whole body of Christ would listen to this message or would read these scriptures because God is not pleased with the church. God wants the church to be holy. He wants a holy people. And so we're involved, especially here in America. We are involved in some things, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, most Christians don't even realize we're there. And so uh, God has given us this word, and this word is edifying. It's, 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 uh, it's opening eyes and opening hearts. And I pray that uh, each person will, will, will uh, circumcise the foreskin of their hearts and, and repent because God does not want us uh, doing anything that's not of him. As I put on my Facebook advertisement yesterday about today's message, I said, God don't like ugly. God don't like ugly and he doesn't want us to persist in being ugly and the church can be ugly the church can be ugly we can be ugly in ignorance we can act ugly and ungodly in ignorance and and a lot of this is because uh, the church chooses to follow leaders who don't follow Jesus ladies and gentlemen we're talking about idolatry following leaders who don't know Jesus, but because they're famous, they're popular, and so many people in the church follow after certain individuals. They go all over the country with them. Wherever they go, they're there. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got to be careful, very careful whom we follow. Don't make an idol out of anyone, not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your clothing, not your car, not your job, not your bank account. God is serious. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, we're going to take a look in this scripture, and I'm going to read the scripture and, and minister to you as we go through the scripture. And God has given me this scripture because uh, it, it's, it's a good example of why we need to read the Old Testament that we're not just to dwell in the New Testament. Now, I can back this up with a supportive uh, passage in the New Testament, and I have several New Testament passages. I don't know if I'll get there today, but we're going to look at why it's important to read the Old Testament. And in reading the Old Testament, we get to look at the heart of God. We get to see what's on God's heart, and God is immutable. That's a word, ladies and gentlemen, that means that he does not change he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so when he, what he says in the Old Testament, he still means it today. He has not changed his standards. And the church needs to take a look at this. Why? Because many people in the church are following leaders who do not teach from the Old Testament. They have thrown the Old Testament out, and they have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. No, that's a sin. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, in, for instruction in righteousness. So, Holy Spirit, guide us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Turn with me, will you please, to 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. Or download it. 2 Kings chapter 17. Uh, it's a rather lengthy chapter. I want to read as much of it as I can because what we see in 2 Kings chapter 17 is a description of why Israel was destroyed and why Judah was destroyed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's be sensible. If God will destroy his own people, Israel and Judah, what makes you think that he will not destroy America? 
What makes us think that America can do anything we want to do and do it without God? And as, as we heard uh, um, Brian Wilson saying, God bless America again. In other words, America's got to do some things and repent and get back in the grace of God so that God can bless America <laughs> again. Let me give you a warning. What we have seen in America and what we're experiencing today, listen to this, because a lot of preachers are not going to preach this. Americans have created their own form of Christianity. I say this, ladies and gentlemen, and I say it to you very carefully. America has created their own form of Christianity. And a lot of people in America have been deceived because of this form of Christianity that is prominent in America. And American Christianity is built on leaders. American Christianity is built on politics. American Christianity is built on what is, is popular. American Christianity is built on idolatry. And American Christianity gives people the impression that they're following Jesus but they're following leaders who do not know Jesus, and many of the leaders who do know Jesus have sold out to Baal. Many of the leaders, I'm talking about many of the prominent leaders in Christianity in America, have sold out. I mean, many of them are in the Rep Republican Party's pockets. They're in the pocket, the back pocket of the president. Many leaders in America are in the back pocket of, of, of Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the America has gotten so far away from Christ that our focus is now on politics, and, and whatever is done in Washington is okay, and whatever is done in your, your uh, legislature, your state house is okay, and and. As long as we say Jesus and say praise the Lord, and ladies and gentlemen, God is not pleased with this form of religion that is pimping God. American religion is pimping God. I, yes, that's the term. American religion is pimping God and using God to get what they want to do. And so there is a real need in America for revival. There's a real need for repentance. There's a real need for Christians to wake up. There's a real need for them to wake up. And if American Christians don't wake up, we're going to find ourselves in the same state that Israel and Judah found themselves in. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor Carter? Well, let's take a look at 2 Kings 17. I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the 17th chapter of 2 Kings. In the 12th year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. So when Ahaz was king of Judah, Hosea began to reign in Samaria. The kingdoms had been separated after uh, the death of King Solomon because of idolatry. Solomon had built idols and groves uh, for his wives to worship their strange gods, and the people followed Solomon in that. And Solomon had started off as a good God-fearing king, but he gave in. He had a thousand wives, uh, 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 hundreds of concubines, and he allowed each one of those women to worship whatever God they wanted to, and Solomon built idols and places of worship for them. Ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully as we go through this message, because Americans have built idols and, and under the guise of being a church, being a Christian nation, and, and we have allowed idolatry to, to uh, overtake Christianity in this nation. But God is not deceived, nor is God mocked. <laughs> if God will punish his people, Israel, which he did, surely he will punish us. So we need to take heed. Uh, a lot of people don't want this kind of preaching. A lot of people don't preach this kind of preaching. A lot of preachers don't want this in their pulpits. And a lot of them want to continue uh, in idolatry. 
and, and the form of worship they're practicing because they're making money, they're getting popular, uh, they're gr getting a lot of likes, they're getting a great followership, and tithes and offerings are coming in because when you allow people to do whatever they want to do, surely people are going to support you. They're going to support you. They're going to ease their conscience by supporting your ministry. But God is calling America to repentance, ladies and gentlemen, just as he called Israel. But Israel did not take heed. Now, Hosea became king of Samaria, the northern kingdom, or the kingdom of the, 12 northern, the ten northern tribes, while Judah was the kingdom of uh, of the southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And Hosea did with that which was, not Hosea, Hosea did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. We, when we look at the kings of Samaria, 20 kings in Samaria, they were all corrupt. They did that which was evil. It says Hosea was not as evil as those who went before him. Verse 3, against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him, gave him presents. The king of Assyria invaded Samaria and, 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 and forced Hosea to pay tribute. In other words, Hosea had to pay a certain amount of money to Assyria, to Assyria so that Assyria would not defeat them. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to Saul, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. So Hosea <coughs> decided he's not going to pay any <laughs> he's not going to pay any more tribute money to the king of Assyria. And he's going to enter into an alliance with with uh, the king of Egypt. And so when Hosea, when Salman Essar found out about that, he came again to Samaria, and um, he took the king, Hosea, shut him up, and bound him in prison. Verse 5, then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. And so the king of Assyria laid siege on Samaria for three years because the king refused to give tribute to pay a, 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 a certain amount of money to the king of Assyria each year. Verse 6, we're in the 17th chapter of 2 Kings, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, my subject today is idolatry in the church, part 2. We're talking about idolatry in the church. Um, much of what we're going to talk about today is idolatry in America, but then we're going to hit it on the head next week with idolatry, with specific things, more specific things uh, in the church. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. In the ninth year that Hosea was king of 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 the nor <coughs> the northern kingdom the king of As of uh, assyria came and defeated samaria led them captive if you want to look at that historically it was the year 721 bc in 721 bc the king of assyria came and captured the Jews in Samaria and carry them away to Assyria. Remove them from their lands. Ladies and gentlemen, don't think it is impossible that foreigners can invade America and carry us away into strange lands. Many of us, I say us because I'm included, many of us have had dreams and visions. Many of us have had visions of invading armies Planes flying over America, armies invading America. Ladies and gentlemen, do not think that because these preachers fail to preach holiness and righteousness and these preachers are rubbing people's backs and, and, and soothing their uh, itching ears and soothing their tickling ears by uh, uh, sugarcoating the gospel, don't 
think that America cannot be invaded and that we cannot be carried away. Ladies and gentlemen, we practice a form of Christianity in this nation that is abominable to God. We are worshiping idols. We're doing everything we want to do. We have formed our own religion in America that is far removed from the Bible. Yes, I'm going to repeat that. We are practicing a form of religion in America that is far removed from what the Bible teaches. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the New Testament passages concerning idolatry and you go into the churches today, you will see a form of religion. Americans have become uh, adept. They have become skilled. They have become a uh, 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 professional in worship. We know how to worship professionally. We know how to practice worship in our churches. We know how to get our praise dancers praising. We know how to perform. We know how to get the choir singing. We know how to put on performances. But God is not pleased, ladies and gentlemen, with what's going on in America. And we need to look at what happened to Israel and what happened to Samaria. Verse 7 of chapter 17. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. Verse 8, And walked in the statutes of the heathen, which the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. Verse 9, and the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. The children of Israel did things secretly. They thought they were in secret. These were things that God told them not to do. They were practicing them. <coughs> they, were, they built groves. They, they built altars unto their false gods. Even on the roof of the temple, ladies and gentlemen, even on the roof of the temple, they had built groves and altars to Baal and to unknown gods in secret places in the, in the temple. They were worshiping God. Ladies and gentlemen, they thought they were getting away, but God sees all. Ladies and gentlemen, in our churches, we've got all kinds of idolatry going on. Uh, 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 we have men pastors who have men as the first lady. We have women pastors who have women as the first lady. That's idolatry. Lesbianism, homosexuality, this is idolatry. Anything that is against the word of God is idolatry. When people deliberately turn from the word of God and practice what they want to practice, ladies and gentlemen, it's idolatry. God said, thou shalt not have any gods before me. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 10. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and every green tree. Ladies and gentlemen, how many churches have you gone through to where you see large photos of the pastor, large pictures of the pastor? I mean, uh, uh, you, you, you get the, the pastor, you see, you see the flag, uh, they, they worship the flag, and, 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 and they worship the pastors and the founders, and, and it's all right to give honor to them, but these people are not God. Verse 11 of Second Kings 17, And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. God told them, You are not to do this thing. But they did them anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, in our churches today, people are doing stuff, and God told them not to do this. But people are stubborn. They are stubborn. They are doing whatever they want to do. Yet the Lord, verse 13, testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your wicked, evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. God kept warning them, turn, turn back to me, turn back to me. Verse 14, notwithstanding, they would not hear. That's a problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's a problem today in our churches. 
in this New Testament age. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're dealing today with a hard-hearted generation, a stiff-necked generation, just as God had to deal with that in the Old Testament times. Verse 15, and they rejected his statutes. They didn't care what God's word says. They rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and they and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Kevin Wilson said, Kevin Wilson said in that song, put the Ten Commandments back on the town square. Uh, <clears throat> take the Ten Commandments and put them back in the county courthouse. Put Bible reading back in school. Start off each day with prayer. Verse 16, and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves and made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. In the northern kingdom, in Samaria, they didn't just make one golden calf. They made two golden calves and called those golden calves their God. In fact, at one point, oh, Samaria and Judah were having a civil war. There was a civil war going on because uh in the northern kingdom, they worshipped two calves, and in the southern kingdom, they were uh, made to worship God in the temple. And so, ladies and gentlemen, don't think it, don't think it uh, 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 strange if, 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 if there's a civil war in this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're closer to civil war in this nation than in, at any time uh, pro going back to the uh, previous civil war. Why? Because people are doing what they think is right. They don't care what the word of God says. They have kicked the word of God out. Preachers are preaching their own. And, the, and many of these big name preachers, ladies and gentlemen, are helping to perpetuate this oncoming civil war because they have chosen their political uh, standpoint and they preach uh, uh, politics. Some preach Republican politics. Some preach Democratic politics. And, and, and they have failed to heed the word of God. God is not a politician. He's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. God is holy. And it will behoove all of us to humble ourselves and get away from being politically correct, get away from kissing up to political leaders, and we need to humble ourselves before the Lord God because contrary to popular belief, God is still on the throne. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of righteousness and holiness. And in America, <coughs> we have chosen to create and develop our own form of Christianity, which is an abomination to God, which, which just, it smacks Jesus in his face. Verse 17, uh, they cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke them to anger. In the Old Testament, the people, people uh, sacrificed their sons and their daughters to Baal and Molech and to these false gods that they actually sacrificed in fire, burned their children unto Baal and unto these uh, false gods. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. You say, well, what's that have to do with us today? Ladies and gentlemen, we have people today sacrificing their children, sacrificing their children to false gods. We have, we have uh, mothers pimping their daughters. We have fathers pimping their sons and daughters. We have, we have uh, mothers and fathers pimping their sons and daughters uh, to sell drugs, to bring money into the household. Things have not changed, ladies and gentlemen. These, God does not honor this. Verse 19, also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord, their God, 
but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And ladies and gentlemen, this is America. This is America today. Listen, and Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. Judah didn't keep the commandments of God. They did the same thing that Israel did. They walked in their own statutes, which they had made, not God. God didn't make those laws, those rules. They made their own laws. They made their own rules. And we see this happening in America today. Verse 20 of chapter 17 of Second Kings, And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. When, when God took the kingdom from David and Solomon, Jeroboam became king. Jeroboam uh, uh, built the uh, idols and, and made the two calves and drove Israel away from God. And so as we look, we see Israel sinning against the Lord. We could read more in uh, chapter uh, 17. You read this, but I want you to get to these verses in chapter 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 37, And the statutes and the ordinances, and the law and the commandment, which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. In other words, <coughs> these statutes I give you, do them. And don't fear other gods. In other words, don't worship other gods. Verse 38, And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. God told them, don't forget the covenant I made with you, and don't worship other gods. Kevin Wilson said, put the Ten Commandments back in the courthouse. Put the Ten Commandments back in the law. Put the Ten Commandments back. In other words, not just the Ten Commandments, but we're talking about the Word of God. The Word of God ought to supersede all other uh, uh, laws. Verse 39, But the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. How be it? Verses 40 and 41. We close the reading of this chapter with verses 40 and 41. How be it? They did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So do they unto this day. They feared the Lord. In other words, they had a practice they went through a, a, a quasi, a superficial uh, form of worshiping God, but yet they served other gods. They worshiped their graven images. They worshiped their idols. You see this in verse 41. I'll read it again. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. And Israel was destroyed, ladies and gentlemen, and Judah was destroyed 150 years after uh, the invasion of Samaria. Samaria was destroyed and wiped out in 721 B.C. Israel was destroyed. Judah was destroyed in 587 B.C. 150 years later, they did not pay, pay heed to what happened to their brothers up in the northern kingdom. But they continue to go through a practice or a form of worship of God, but yet, in essence, they worship their own idols. They created their own gods. That's what we see in verse 41. And they taught that to their children and their children's children, and they all did what their fathers had done in the wilderness. And so the Scripture says, so do they unto this day, meaning at the time that this Scripture was written, the mid-500s B.C. when Ezra wrote the book of Second Kings. Well, that's a lot of reading, and we didn't read all of that chapter, but there's a lot in there. And I want you to, I want to encourage you, go back and read that scripture, and 
Um, next week, I'm going to give you a New Testament scriptures. Then we're going to look specifically at the church. We're going to look at America. We're going to look at things that people are doing that we ought not to be doing. We're going to look at things that uh, uh, big name leaders are leading the people to do, but and, and the people are being deceived. People are being deceived in America, and God is not pleased. We're going to look at uh, 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 politics in, in the church and, and how politics has, has shaped the church in America. Uh, um, uh, people have gotten their eye, taken their eyes off Jesus Christ, and, and now it's got to the point, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, church, the church wants to be politically correct. The church has chosen which way it wants to go. Uh, half of the church in America has chosen to be a democratic church. Half have chosen to be Republican. Half have chosen, uh, and, and the church is uh, practicing idolatry, hatred, uh, uh, idol worship. Um, half of the church is going the way a certain political, political leader is going, and half is going the way another political leader is going, and nobody wants to listen to God, and they've taken their eyes off God, and now their gods are, hey, hey, the president is the idol. Many people have made the president an idol. He can do anything and say anything he wants to do, and people will follow him. And you're going to see in your lifetime, you're going to see people going down the tube because they chose to follow and idolize their president. Then you're going to see people going down the tube because they chose to idolize certain congressmen and certain leaders. And then when we take a look at the, the many people who idolize <clears throat> athletic figures, athletes, idolize singers, idolize movie stars, idolize uh, 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 pornography and pornographic characters, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and these, we're, these are church-going people who are in church every Sunday and going through a form of worship. And then when we look at the number of people who are idolizing themselves, I mean, there are people in this life, and you know some. Everywhere they go, they've got to take a selfie. I mean, I mean, I mean it's all right to take a selfie. I, li I like to see in the background, let people see where I am, what, where I visit. But I mean, a selfie every five minutes. Or take my picture, or you're taking a picture. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. You have put yourself above God. You worship yourself, or take a picture of my nails, or take a picture of my hair, or take a picture of my... Now, Jackie Fisher, I'm not against Mary Kay makeup. Keep on selling Mary Kay. But take a picture of my makeup. Uh, uh, take a picture of my eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, it can get to uh, become idolatry, so we've got to be careful. Well. We have gotten far away from the Word of God. I think every one of you agree with that. We've gotten far away from the Word of God in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why we teach the Bible every Wednesday night. We call people to Bible study, and we uh, uh, get people to focus on the Word of God. Not only do we wait for once a week, but we encourage you... <laughs> every day to read the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God said in his word, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of me. God is grieved, ladies and gentlemen, because there's, there are hardly any people who are hungering and thirsting after him. Uh, God says, you don't love me as 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 you used to love me. When Israel was a child, uh, Israel loved me. When I brought you through the wilderness, you loved me. But then you grew up, and now you're practicing other idols. It's the same thing in the church. Ladies and gentlemen, people love the Lord when they're in need. You let somebody get in need, Dustina, and you know and I know they will cry unto God. They're crying to you to pray for them. Uh, they've got a need. Uh, 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 but once that need is satisfied, they go back to their idol, idolistic, idolat idolatrous practices. We have gotten far away from, from God. Ladies and gentlemen, God said it's time to repent. It's time to repent. God has been saying through the prophets since the Old Testament times, return to me, return to me. Hosea said, the, uh, the prophet Hosea, return to me. Return to me. Isaiah said, return unto me. God told Isaiah, comfort ye, my people. Tell them to return to me. Wait on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Paul preached, return to God. Paul preached in Corinth, 
uh, one of the most idolatrous cities in the world and told the people to put away your idols and turn to the Lord God. Paul preached in Thessalonica and told the people to get rid of your idols and worship the Lord God. And in our days, ladies and gentlemen, we've got these big buildings, these brick and mortal palaces. They're palatial. We invest money. Uh, one man built a crystal palace. We build these shrines unto God, but basically they're shrines unto mankind. We put people's names on plaques in the building, people who gave a lot of money to build the building. We enshrine them on plaques. We put plaques on the pews. Uh, you can't sit on the pews because the Smith family owns that pew or the Johnson family purchased that pew. Ladies and gentlemen, we build idols even in the church to people. Uh, we idolize the pastor. His picture is wall to wall behind the pulpit, is wall to wall, and they worship him. They worship the founders of the church. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not pleased. Well, I go to church every Sunday. Yes, yes. But is that place where you're going glorifying God? Well, I've been going there since I was a child. Yes, yes. But have you received the Lord Jesus Christ? And, 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 and why do you continue to sit and dwell among them? Jesus said, come out from among them. Why do you persist in hanging out with people who worship idols? Why do you insist on uh, hanging out with people who are whoremongers, who are adulterers, who are, are fornicators, who are lesbians? Why do you keep on going to that lesbian church? Why do you keep going to that gay church? If, if, if you're set free, then you ought to get away from it. Why do you keep on <coughs> hanging out with demonic spirits? These are some of the things that many people in the church need to answer, but they're afraid to answer, and they will hate you if you raise those questions. It's time for the church to repent. It's time for America to repent. It's time for us to stop saying these uh, things that we've heard since the time we were children, uh, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and then we oppress other people. We hate people because of their skin color. We hate people because of their religion. We hate people because of uh, the kind of work they do. Uh, uh, there's so much hatred. And, and, and how can you, you shelf, put hatred on the shelf for one hour while you go and, and go through a religious practice on a Sunday and then pick up that hatred again? That's America, ladies and gentlemen. Americans put their hatred on the shelf for uh, 45 minutes or an hour. And some of them go and light a candle, they get on their knees, they make a cross, sign of a cross, and, and uh, put an envelope in the basket and, 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 and uh, 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 kiss the priest's ring, and then they think they have worshipped God. That's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. That's idolatry. It's a form of religion. God said you must be born again. You must receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you receive Jesus Christ, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody get receiving Jesus Christ is not free from hatred, not free from racism, not free from adultery or idolatry or lasciviousness. Every one of us is tempted. The Bible says there is no temptation taken you but such as is common to God. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able, but will along with the temptation also make the way to escape. There's a way to escape that hatred in your heart. There's a way to escape that racism in your heart. We don't have to continue living as a racist nation. We don't have to hate people because of their political persuasion. We are to love one another. The word of God says, love thy neighbor as thyself. And it's time for the church to repent and do the things of God. Jesus said in Revelation, uh, you, have, you have turned from your first love. You have turned from your first love. I'm your first love, but you have turned from me. Return unto your first love and do the first works. Do you hear what the Lord is saying? Return to your first love and do the first works. Let us repent now before it is too late, ladies and gentlemen. 
God is not deceived, nor is he mocked. As a man soweth, so shall he reap. There's coming a day, ladies and gentlemen, where you and I have to stand before the Almighty God and give an account of the life that we live in this flesh. And the scripture describes that many will say, but Lord, Lord, I preached in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I fed the hungry. I visited the sick. I made prayer cloths. I wove uh, 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 radiation caps. I, I gave to the poor. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the saddest, most traumatic words anyone will ever hear. Depart from me. I never knew you. Let us turn to the Lord while there's still time. Let us put away our idols. The Bible says flee idolatry. Let us put away our idols and turn to the Lord. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Second Kings chapter 17. We thank you for the whole Bible. We thank you that you so love the world, Father, that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, Lord, we know that your word has convicted many people today, those who are online live with us and those who are listening to the recording. And, Lord, if those who are convicted, help them to repent, help them to uh, ask for forgiveness. And, Lord, forgive them, God. You say, call unto me, and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Forgive us, Lord. I repent of my sins, Lord God. I repent of anything I've ever said or done that's not of you. I repent, God, for being blindsided by the enemy. I repent for choosing not to obey you. I repent for not uh, following your word. Oh, God, create in me and create in your people. Forgive us, Father. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And then, God, forgive this nation. Forgive America. Get us back on track, Lord. Get us back on track, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Forgive the church, God. Get the church back on track. Lord, you said in your word, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. Call on the name of the Lord today, ladies and gentlemen while there is still time. If you're not saved, ask the Lord today to save you and receive him by faith. Father God, we thank you and bless you and praise you and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God.